The law of segregation is really pretty simple. We were actually already using it when we were looking at the normal and wrinkled leaves over here. So we were supposing here that one parent, well, this was the genotype of one parent, and this was the genotype of the other parent. So what are we really doing when we make a Punnett square? Well, we're saying that, say, parent one, parent one here has two alleles, uppercase L and lowercase L. And those are going to have to go into the parent's gametes. So how many of these alleles is each gamete going to get? Well, um, so this is on one chromosome, and this is on the parent's other homologous chromosome. However, these two chromosomes are not both going to go into the same gamete. Instead, one is going to go into, they're going to separate during the anaphase stage of um, meiosis. During anaphase, these separate. One of these will go into one gamete, and one will go into a separate gamete. So this represents that half of the gametes will get this allele, and half of the gametes will get this allele. Another way to phrase that is, um, in, the, in, this, in, the, in the parent's somatic cells, remember the somatic cells are the normal cells, not the gametes. In the somatic cells, these two chromosomes are both in the cell. The somatic cells have both of these chromosomes. Mm -hmm. However, when you make the gametes, these segregate away from each other. One of the alleles goes to one and one goes to the other. It's actually a kind of a fancy, pompous name for a very simple idea. We really use that idea. When you make the Punnett square, you don't write it like this. You don't say that one gamete will get both alleles and the other gamete will get both alleles. Instead, you say the two alleles will segregate separately from each other. Okay. Half of the gametes will get one and half will get the other. So the law of segregation is actually a very simple idea that um, even though the somatic cells have both alleles, each gamete has only one of the alleles. In fact, half of the gametes will have one of the alleles, and um, the other half of the gametes will segregate the other half of the alleles away from each other. Remember, segregation is when things are separated from each other. When the somatic cells, these alleles are together. But in the gametes, they're separated into separate cells. That's all that they're saying there. Independent assortment is maybe more interesting and more important. And in order to understand that, we have to think about a case with two separate traits. Let's say that this was one of the parents and this was one of the parents. Let's say we're going to make the Punnett square for this. Um, so uh, I'm going to make a gamete for, uh, from this parent. So let's make a gamete. Now what are the odds that this gamete will get the capital L allele from the parent? What prob what's the probability that the gamete will get the capital L allele from this parent? Mm, three to one. So this is actually a much simpler idea than that. Oh. That three to one idea is when is refers to the offspring yeah. when the gametes are combining. But first of all, we just want to make a gamete from this one parent. Yeah, so it's 50. Yeah, there's a 50% chance that the capital L will go into any particular gamete. Uh -huh. So there's a 50% chance that this gamete will get the capital L. So 50% of the time, maybe I should that way. 50% of the time, the gamete gets the capital L, and 50% it gets the lowercase. 50% of the gametes get capital L, and 50% get lowercase, and this is the original genotype, if it was a heterozygote. Now, suppose I told you that this is a gamete with a capital L. What are the odds that this gamete is going to get the capital P? Um, 50%. And what are the odds that this capital L gamete is going to get the lowercase p? Also 50%. OK, good.
What are the odds that a gamete with a lowercase l would have a capital P? 50%. And what are the odds that it, the lower l would go with the lowercase p? The same. 50%. So what percentage of the gametes would have a capital L and a capital P? Uh, 25. Because that's 50 times 50. And 50 times 50 would give 25% chance of having a capital L and a lowercase p. 25% chance of having a lowercase p and a, a lowercase l and a capital P. And 25% chance of having lower l. So the key thing here is notice that if I tell you what, what, what type of L, the gamete has, that doesn't give you any information about the type of P. Mm -hmm. That is, the assortments of the P's are completely independent of the assortments of the L's. That's the idea that the law of independent assortment is trying to give you. Okay. It's trying to say that knowing the L allele doesn't tell you about what P you're going to get. They're, uh, they're uh, assorting independently of each other. And you can see why. Let's say this is on a chromosome, this is on a homologous chromosome, this is on a chromosome, and this is on a chromosome. Well. Um, let's say that this chromosome moves into one particular gamete. That doesn't give you any information about which of these two chromosomes is going to move into this gamete. So if these are all on separate chromosomes, if these are all on separate chromosomes, then knowing that you got the capital L chromosome doesn't tell you anything about which of the P chromosomes you're going to get. They're sorting independently of each other. Um, all right, so that's all that the law of independent assortment tells you. It tells you that knowing what type of one allele you get doesn't give you any information about another allele. That's why when we make the Punnett square for this, really assuming the law of independent assortment when, anytime you make one of these bigger Punnett squares. This is a more complicated Punnett square than we've used. You've probably seen this in the book. Notice that whenever you use one of these, you're really assuming that each of these rows is equally likely, and each of these columns is equally likely. Well, that's because of this independent assortment idea. Notice how all these probabilities came out to be equal to each other. Because these are all coming out equal, all equally likely because of independent assortment.